Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can detect and react to a change in the visibility of a page for a user using the native page visibility API. So this can be useful in saving resources if data is being transmitted to a page and it's unnecessary when the page is not in view then you can use the page visibility API to pause the transmission of data and you can use it to pause the state of the UI when the page is not in view. So for example, like with this video, so when a video is playing, data is being transmitted to the page. You can see how much at the bottom of the network tab and of course, it's also playing. So we're by about 17 seconds. Now the default behavior when you navigate to another page is for the video to keep on playing. And as a result, the data to keep being transmitted to the page. So what I'm going to show you here is how you can pause the video when the page is not in view and resume playing using the page visibility API. So you can check whether the page is currently visible via the visibility state property on document. And this can be one of two values, visible or hidden. So because this log to the console is being made on page load, it's going to be visible initially. Now to listen for a change in its value to hidden or back to visible. Again, you can listen out for the visibility change event on document and in the handler function respond. So the new visibility status, it's not available on an event passed in to the handler function, but we can use the visibility state property now, an alternative way to check the visibility is a hidden property on document, which can either be true or false. But because of a known issue with the hidden property being true upon initial page load in some browsers before the page is rendered, it's considered better practice to check visibility using the visibility state property so if the visibility state becomes hidden i'm going to log to the console using count so i can see how many times the message has been logged to the console and if it turns visible i log to the console as well now the reason that i'm not just using elf here i'm actually specifying the condition is that in earlier implementations of the page visibility API, the visibility state had two additional values, pre-render before a page has rendered and unloaded before a page is closed. These have both been deprecated, but it's still a good idea in case the user is using an older browser to be explicit here. So let's test this now. If I navigate to the other tab, hidden and visible are logged to the console for the first time. If I minimize the tab, same thing happens. Now the visibility change event, it won't fire if the page is only partially obscured. So if you're able to see even just part of the page, that event is not going to be fired. But once it is fully obscured, then it will fire. Now, the last thing that I want to do here is to pause and play the video in response to the page being hidden and becoming visible. So when the page is hidden you can pause the video by calling the pause method on the video element 
and I'll call the play method when the page is visible. So I'll play the video, switch to another tab. We were on around two or three seconds of play time. And when I return, we're at the same point. Now, if we take a look at the data that's being transmitted as a result of the video playing, if we weren't using the page visibility API, all of this data would still be transmitted, even though we were viewing the other page. So this is the amount of data that we would be saving by using the page visibility API in this case. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.